One of the most common questions that I get is, how do I know whether I should use Z interval or T interval to find a confidence interval for a mean? So I have um, a list of things that will tell you um, whether it's a Z uh, or D, um, normal distribution or the student's T distribution that you should be using. So. First of all, if they tell you the population standard deviation, so they specifically say population standard deviation, then you're going to use the normal distribution because population standard deviation is sigma. Now, if you know the sample standard deviation, then you're going to use the student's T distribution because when they tell you the sample standard deviation, you don't know the population standard deviation. So um, um, that's how you know that it's going to be the student's t distribution. Now, another thing, and these are really all equivalent to each other. So these are all just different ways of saying you know sigma or you don't know sigma. So you know sigma, it's going to be the normal distribution. You know the sample standard deviation, it's the student's t distribution. Now, it might have the word sigma instead of the symbol for sigma. Again, normal distribution. I don't have like an equivalent for that with student T. And the last one is the trickiest. All right, so um, if they tell you here is the standard deviation for all individuals in the population, then that's the normal distribution because all in the population is population standard deviation. And they might not say pop, the word population. They might say something like the standard deviation um, body te of the body temperatures for um, people is, I don't know, 2.7 degrees or something like that. So I just made that number up. So they just said for, pe for all people, right? So that would be standard deviation for the whole population and that would be normal distribution. And if it says something like, from a sample of n individuals, you know the mean is this, and the standard deviation is this. Now, this is the most common one that people have trouble with, because they see the word standard deviation, and they say, oh, it doesn't say population or sample right there in front of it. So I guess it must be sigma, because so, that seems more standard deviation-ish than S. It's not. So there's population standard deviation, there's sample standard deviation. Just because they didn't put the word population or put the word sample right in front, it doesn't tell you which way to go. So how do I know which way I go? Well, how do I have this over here on student T? Because it says from a sample of n individuals, this is how we know the mean and the standard deviation. It's from the sample. And so it's a sample standard deviation and also the sample mean. So that's, you're going to use student's T. Now, if you're stuck on the test and you're panicking and you can't decide whether it's Z or T, go with T. Most people go Z and that's usually wrong. If you're panicking and you're not sure which one to use, it's much more likely that you're stuck because it's actually a T, and it's probably this situation that you're stuck on. So go student's T if you're not sure. It's, you know, not a guarantee, but it, it's the better way to go of the, the two choices. And then, of course, if it's a confidence interval for a proportion, then you're going to use one prop Z interval. And the nice thing about this information is it's going to help you in the next chapter that you have after this test. You're going to be in chapter nine and we're going to use exactly the same logic again. So you want to know this for this test, but also for the next one. So it's going to come in handy twice. All right.